Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and today I have a spoiler free book review of The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang for you guys. So if you watched my reading vlog, you will know that this has quickly became one of my absolute favorite books of all time very unexpectedly. I picked up this book really knowing almost nothing about it. However, some very trustworthy high adult fantasy reviewers that I had been seeing on Goodreads were giving this phenomenal reviews. Knowing nothing about it other than having seen the cover and I didn't even read the reviews. I just saw five stars from some reviewers who don't give out five stars very easily and just like a little blurb of like how they thought this book was so phenomenal. Just going based on that I decided to give it a try and I am so glad that I did. This book is absolutely amazing and deserves so much more attention and so much high praise. So needless to say, I gave this a five out of five stars. It is a new favorite book of all time. It's probably the best book that I've read this year and I do not foresee this moving from probably the top three. I mean, for sure the top five, but I'm guessing it will be in my top reads of 2020 just for how much this book spoke to me emotionally. So as I said, this is an adult high fantasy. Now I say high fantasy loosely because there's like some modern technology and things like that in other areas, but the village in the mountains in which our story takes place is very antiquated and outdated and they don't have a lot of the modern technology but they do have things like TVs. I mean most everything still comes by way of letters. They're not like picking up cell phones and things like that but there is mentions of more modern technology in outside cities but it doesn't feel like an urban fantasy by any means. So I just want to read a little clip from the Goodreads synopsis and then I'll kind of describe what the book is about just a little because I think it's best if you don't know too much before going in. So just a little tagline says, a mother struggling to repress her violent past, a son struggling to grasp his violent future, a father blind to the danger that threatens them all. When the winds of war reach their peninsula, will the Matsuda family have the strength to defend their empire or will they tear each other apart before the true enemies even reach their shores? Our main perspectives as we begin are from the mother Misaki and her son Mamoru. And so that that's the main perspectives we get from the beginning and I think for the most part, the only perspectives that we get. It's following this really intense, familial relationships and character arcs within our main characters and some of the side characters really analyzing the past what these characters have been through and how they grow and change as they find out things about each other because within this family there's so many hidden secrets that they don't know about one another that really changes the way that they interact after things kind of are exposed. So at the very beginning we're following Mamoru. He's 14 years old. He goes to this like elite training school to become a fighter. That's kind of everything that this society is based on because there's three really really important families that through legend and time like they are just the most powerful and all the other families are kind of lesser to them. I guess it's, it's not really like clans I guess I, I mean sort of but it gives me the vibes of Jade City and Jade War which you guys know are some of my absolute favorite books right now. That series is one of my top ongoing fantasy series. I can't get enough of it. If you like that book you'll love this because this is very reminiscent of that just in the vibes, the family, the magic. So we're following him and he knows he has so much to live up to because his father is one of the most important people in the entire village along with his uncle who's his father's older brother and these people have special powers and only some of the descendants are capable of this power and he hasn't been able to do it yet so he's just on this mission to accomplish that and live up to his dad's legacy and to be that kind of fighter. It's all he cares about. Very early on in the book from the very first chapter, a newer, like an outsider of Mamoru's age is introduced to the group of characters. And as I said, he's from outside this little village and he starts to open Mamoru's eyes to things that 
might not be accurate or things that the Empire might be hiding from this village to sort of use them. So it's about him coming into his own and learning what he needs to trust and believe in order to make his decisions about what he thinks is true. So we're following that storyline and then we're following his mother, Misaki, who has this past that you slowly uncover so you don't want to say too much about it. But basically she was forced to kind of give everything up to become this mother and that's her only role and that's her only purpose and she has to kind of forget who she was and who she is and who she wants to be for the purpose of bearing and raising these children. So that's kind of where we start out at. I don't want to get into the plot much more than that, but there's like there's a couple other things that I want to talk about. So first of all, the magic in this book, I'll just bring that up right away. It's so cool. It reminds me of Avatar The Last Airbender. It's like elemental style magic. So you meet some people not in these families in this mountain but other people elsewhere who have like heat and like fire abilities almost but within this village they have powers with water and ice and they create weapons and they're able to manipulate like actually think of waterbenders because that's in my opinion what they're doing and that's how they fight and train I mean obviously they have swords and stuff like that as well but that their main abilities come from manipulating water. So it was just so interesting to learn about their fighting techniques and everything involved with that. There's also some magic mentioned with like manipulation of blood. And so that was really interesting too. So I think that the, the magic system in this, I mean, elemental magic, that's not something new, but just the way that it was done, it was done so well in this book. I wanna read 10 more books about this type of magic in this world, basically. I love the setting of this novel. It was very contained to this mountain village where we stayed in the mountain pretty much, but we did have scenes from elsewhere and along the coast just past the mountain. But I just loved the feel and the setting. I think that the author did a phenomenal job with the world building that they desired to present to you because you're absolutely able to picture everything going on right where we are, but you also get just a little taste of what's going on in the outside world from some flashbacks, because I forgot to mention that this book, the format that it's written, it doesn't say, okay, X amount of years ago, you'll just be reading and then the next chapter will be a flashback. And so you have to like piece together like, okay, obviously this isn't happening now. This is something that so-and-so is remembering from the past, but I enjoyed that so much because you slowly got to learn the backstory of these characters. So I think that that writing technique worked really well for this story. It's more of a character-driven novel than a plot-driven novel, definitely, but the plot was still good because at the heart of this novel, we are analyzing basically like a censorship where the empire is sort of displaying false information on their TVs and falsifying history and events that took place basically. So that is what our younger character Mamoru is really opening his mind to and learning about. In saying that, some of the things that they have been lied to about are sort of coming back to bite them because they believe that they are the, they are the sword of Kaigen. Where they are here, they think that they're basically invincible and they can beat anybody and they don't know what's coming their way. I'm just going to leave it at that. So we are definitely dealing with like this other, and I don't even want to say war and I don't want to give away any of it, but it was so much more than just a war of two countries or two clans. There was a really unique spin on it, a really unique twist that I thought I just don't see often. And it brought it to that next level because if it was just between these two clans or these two areas being at war with one another, I mean, we've seen that done so many times, but the little twist that was put on it was so great in my opinion. It just made it really a lot more original. So I did enjoy the plot, but where this novel excels is the character development and the character growth because it really is just taking a look at these familial relationships, but also making these characters look within themselves to analyze their behaviors, past, present, future, etc., and how they can make changes. There's so many relationships that are explored with side characters, with friendships, with other villagers, 
it was just like mind blowing to me how this is only almost a 700 page book and it's a standalone. So in one book, I felt so grounded in this world. I felt like I knew so much about the culture and the people and the history and the magic. It was just mind blowing what this author was able to accomplish in this one book. And that speaks volumes to me. Like I said, the there is a lot of history explained to you in this. In fact, in the beginning, one of the teachers that teaches history just kind of word vomits like a ton of the history out to you for like paragraphs and paragraphs. I like things like that because I like knowing backstories and I like knowing the history of the world. But there's a ton of history that we learn about this place and the societies that's really integral to the story. So I think that it added a lot to the novel, but it just, I think that's why it felt so rich because of the history that we learned. But like I said, the last 30% had me just wanting to like sob. I really don't cry when I'm reading books, but I wanted to, like I had that feeling because of the character growth that is made by multiple characters. And there are some devastating, I mean, this, this is a gut-wrenching, heartbreaking novel. There are so many devastating things that happen in this book, things I didn't expect or didn't see coming, I was really shocked by. It's really a book about grief and loss and death and devastation and learning how to carry those things with you and move on from them rather than allowing yourself to be completely broken and destroyed by them. And I think that's really the heart of the novel with the characters themselves is how they all learn to deal with this. So I don't know, it just wrapped up beautifully in the end too. It's not like a picture perfect ending or anything like that. And I can really see, you know, when I read the synopsis of the Theonite series, because this is a prequel to that series, which I don't know if I'm going to read or not because they're pretty short books, but I can see how it would lead into that based on what you learn at the end of this novel. But like I said, I feel like I'm forgetting a million things because this was just such an emotional read to me more than like analytical and logically reviewed. Just it spoke to me so much. There were so many beautiful quotes. And that's another thing is that the author just did a beautiful and phenomenal job executing the points that she was trying to make. Like I said in my vlog, this hit on another level. We are discussing so many really important topics like classism, sexism, racism, all these different things, like really heavy political issues, censor censorship with the government, things like that. There are hard hitting important topics that we're discussing, but the author just does it in a way that doesn't even compare to other books that might try to hit on those same topics. So those are not unique topics to touch on in fantasy novels, a lot of them do, but this, the execution of it in this novel was just on another level in my opinion, and it just drove the messages home more so because of how much it appealed to your emotions. I think that's what the author was trying to do, was really connect to you to get you to open your eyes to these issues almost. If you saw my vlog, you know how much I was just gushing about it, but it just left such an emotional impact in my opinion. And it almost put me in a reading slump, not because I didn't want to read afterwards, but because nothing was living up to it that I was trying to read afterwards. It just wasn't living up to this novel and these characters and the growth that they went through and the journey that they went on. And it was just, even though it was gut-wrenching, it was also heartwarming at the same time. So I cannot recommend this book enough. I hope that someone picks it up after watching this review because of me, because that would make my little heart so happy to hear that someone picked this book up. I believe it's still free. If you go to Amazon, like for a Kindle read, I believe it's free. Uh, I will definitely be purchasing the hardback for my collection because it's a new favorite book. Yeah, it's free, so there's no reason not to read it. <laughs> if you guys have read it, please talk to me in the comments about it because I'm dying. As soon as I finished it, I was like, I gotta call someone and then I was like I don't know anybody that's read this book so that was really sad so if you've read it please talk to me about it in the comments I would love to chat with you guys let me know if you're going to pick it up and then come back later if you did and discuss it with me so hopefully you guys will have found a new underrated fantasy novel today I cannot wait to see what this author does in the future I think their work is phenomenal and I am so excited to see whatever they come out with next I will be first in line to buy that book. I cannot wait. So please pick this book up. Give it a try. <laughs>
and come back and let me know if you liked it. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.